Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to be talking about systems of linear inequalities. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a big thank you to the Gitterman family. Thanks to their generous donation, they made this video possible. If you weren't already aware, 100% of the money from donations, as well as YouTube revenue, will go towards hiring low-income high school students to pay them to tutor and mentor low-income younger students. So basically by supporting this channel, you're helping some struggling high school students make some money while helping some younger kids get some free tutoring. If you'd like to find out more about my program, you can visit my website at www.simplified.com. Now let's talk about this video. This video is broken down into six different examples or six different parts. After going through some background information on how to graph linear inequalities and systems, I'll cover four different application word problems. While you don't have to like systems of linear inequalities, there's nothing stopping you from going ahead and liking this video. Now why don't you just join me and grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, let's talk about how to graph linear inequalities. To understand how to graph linear inequalities, in order to understand how to graph linear inequalities, it's important to first understand how to graph linear equations. Let's look at this equation of y is equal to 3x minus 4. Looking down here, here's the graph for this equation. The minus 4 in the equation represents the y-intercept, which is right down here at 0 comma negative 4, and the slope is positive 3, or a ratio of 3 to 1, which we see as a rise of 3 and a run of 1, and a rise of 3 and a run of 1. Since the linear equation is already in slope-intercept form, it's easy to graph. Now let's take a look at these linear inequalities. Notice how they all have the y isolated on the left side, as well as the same 3x minus 4 on the right side. However, instead of an equation sign, they all have different inequality symbols. Here's our greater than, here's our less than, here's our greater than or equal to, and here's our less than or equal to. Making sure you understand the similarities and differences between these symbols will help you graph linear inequalities much easier. In terms of the actual line that you draw for each of these linear inequalities, it's important to know that they all have the same line as a linear equation. Let's see how they differ though. For this first one, it's important that you notice that we have a dashed line. Whenever you have a less than or greater than symbol, this will be the case. You also want to notice that we have all this shading over here. Because there are infinite solutions to inequalities, there are going to be infinitely many ordered pairs that make this linear inequality true. In order to figure out which side to shade, all you need to do is pick one point on one side of the line and plug it into the linear inequality. By plugging 0, 0 in for a linear inequality, since we get a true statement, we know we're going to shade on this side. On the other hand, if you pick 0, 0 and it didn't work for the inequality, you would just shade the other side of the line. Now let's take a look at this one. The only difference between this one and the one we just did was that the inequality is less than instead of greater than. If we try out this point of 0, 0 right over here and plug it into our linear inequality, we're going to get an incorrect statement or a false statement, which is why we know we shade to the other side. If you understand how the less than and greater than linear inequalities work, then the less than or equal to and greater than or equal to ones are pretty much the same. The only difference you want to be aware of is that we're going to have solid lines instead of dashed lines. The key thing to remember about graphing linear inequalities is that they work the same way as linear equations, you just have to worry about dashed lines and solid lines and which side to shade. If you have a less than or greater than symbol, you're going to have a dashed line. And when you have this greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you're going to have a solid line. As for knowing which side to shade, you can just test an ordered pair and see if it makes the inequality true, and if it does, shade that side. If it doesn't, shade the other side. Hopefully that gives you a quick review on how to graph linear inequalities. In example two, let's practice graphing these systems of linear inequalities to find the solutions. For the system on the left, let's start by graphing this top linear inequality. Since it's nice that it's already in slope-intercept form, remember that this plus eight represents the y-intercept, so we can put that right here on the y-axis. And our slope here is going to be negative 2, so we can move down 2 into the right one, and we can continuously do this to plot more points. Since we have a less than symbol here, we're going to put a dashed line through these points. Now that we have our line here, we just have to decide which side to shade. To make things easier for myself, I typically just choose 0, 0 to see if this is going to work. Substituting in 0, 0, we have 0 is less than negative 2 times 0 plus 8. Since negative 2 times 0 is just 0, we get 0 is less than 8. Since this is true, we can go ahead and shade this side of the line. Now let's take a look at our second inequality. Our y-intercept is negative 4, so we can plot that right down here along the y-axis. And our slope here is positive 3, so we're going to move up 3 into the right one to plot our point. To get a better idea where our line is, we can plot more points to make it more clear. And since we have a greater than or equal to symbol, we're going to use a solid line for this inequality. 
Just like we did earlier, let's test 0, 0 and see what happens with this yellow line. Now to decide which side we're going to shade of this second line, we can test 0, 0 again. Substituting in 0, 0, we have 0 is greater than or equal to 3 times 0 minus 4. 3 times 0 is just 0, so we have 0 is greater than or equal to negative 4. Since this is true, we're going to shade the left side of this yellow line. Now that we've graphed both linear inequalities, the section that represents all of our solutions is the one that got shaded twice. Any ordered pair that's in this area over here that got shaded twice could represent a solution for the system of linear inequalities. Now let's take a look at this system. Starting with this top one, let's rewrite this so we have it in slope-intercept form. We're going to subtract 2x from both sides here, and we'll have negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 3. Then dividing both sides by negative 1, we'll get y on the left side, and then remember we actually flip the inequality the other way, and we'll have positive 2x minus 3. Now that this is in slope-intercept form, this will be easier to graph. Don't forget to make it a solid line, and if you test the point 0, 0, it's going to create a false statement, so it's not going to work, which means we'll shade this side that doesn't include 0, 0. Now let's look at the second equation. Again, let's rearrange this so it's in slope-intercept form, which is a little bit easier to graph. We're going to add x to both sides, and we'll get 2y is less than x plus 10. Dividing both sides by 2, we can say that y is less than 1 half x plus 5. Now that we're in slope-intercept form, let's graph it. Here's our line, and don't forget it needs to be dashed. If you test the point 0, 0 again for this inequality, it's going to work, so we're going to shade below this line. All the points below this yellow line are solutions to this linear inequality. Now let's look at this last inequality where we have x is less than 4. And that's just going to be this green vertical line at x equals 4. Make sure you have a dashed line. And testing 0, 0, it is going to work because 0 is less than 4, so we're going to shade to its left. Now that we've graphed all three linear inequalities, only the area that got shaded all three times is going to represent where the solutions are for the system of linear inequalities. Just to clean up these graphs a bit, the areas in which these dots are located represent the solutions to these linear inequalities. In example three, let's take a look at an application word problem together. Strangely, Kenma is inviting the whole Nekama and Karasuno volleyball teams over for a party. He wants to make cupcakes for his friends. He needs more than 9 pounds of a combination of icing and sprinkles, and icing costs $5 per pound and sprinkles cost $7 per pound. If Kenma has a budget of $56, write and graph a system of linear inequalities. Then identify and interpret a solution of the system. Finally, use the graph to determine if Kenma can buy 9 pounds of icing and 1 pound of sprinkles. Let's start by defining our variables here. Icing will be one of them, and sprinkles will be the other. While it's up to you, I'm going to let x represent the pounds of icing and y represent the pounds of sprinkles. Since we have two variables, let's set up a system of linear inequalities. For our first inequality, let's write x plus y is greater than 9. Here we're saying the total amount of pounds of icing plus the total pounds of sprinkles has to be more than 9 pounds. For our second linear inequality, let's write 5x plus 7y is less than or equal to 56. 5x represents the total cost of the icing, 7y is the total cost of the sprinkles, and the $56 is the budget Kenma has to stay under. Rearranging the first linear inequality into slope-intercept form, we can write that y is greater than negative x plus 9. And rewriting our second linear equality, we can write y is less than or equal to negative 5 sevenths x plus 8. Graphing this first one, make sure we have a dashed line and we shade away from the origin since 0, 0 won't work. And for our second linear inequality, we have a solid line here and we're going to include 0, 0 in our shading since it does make this inequality true. Now that we've graphed both linear inequalities, notice the area that got shaded twice represents our solutions. A possible solution we could have here is going to be 9, 1. That's an ordered pair that is in that region. This means Kenma could buy 9 pounds of icing and 1 pound of sprinkles. In this case, he'll have more than 9 pounds of both combined and he'll be under his budget of $56. And you could also say something like 8, 2. Any ordered pair that's not in this double shaded region is not going to be a solution. Let's take a look at another one here. Elias needs to earn at least $240 per week by working as an actor and a tutor. He earns $60 per day as an actor and $40 per day as a tutor. He's required to work as a tutor for at least two days a week, but he wants to work less than six days a week in total. Write a system of linear inequalities and graph your solution. Let's start by looking at the variables we have. First, we have his job as an actor, then we have his job as a tutor. Let's let x represent the number of days he spends acting and y represent the number of days he spends tutoring. Now let's write some linear inequalities representing the money and how much he's actually working. 
Let's start by writing this one where we have 60x plus 40y is greater than or equal to 240. Here's the $60 per day acting, plus $40 per day tutoring, and he wants to make at least $240. Here's the second one here. We have y is greater than or equal to 2. Remember that y represents the number of days he spends tutoring, and he's required to do this at least two days a week. And we actually have a third linear inequality here. We have x plus y is less than 6. The amount of days that Elias spends acting, plus the amount of days he spends tutoring, has to be less than six days a week. Now let's graph each of these linear inequalities. For the first one, we're gonna have a solid line over here shaded away from zero, zero. And for this inequality, we're gonna have a solid horizontal line and shade above it since zero, zero doesn't work again. And for this last one, we're gonna graph this over here. Now, since it looks a bit hectic, I'm gonna get rid of some of the lines so we just have the area that got shaded all three times. This pink triangle formed from the three linear inequalities represents all the solutions for the system of linear inequalities. One possible solution for this system is gonna be two comma three. That means to satisfy these conditions, Elias could work two days acting and three days tutoring. Let's try another here. Scarlett and Margot are going on a road trip. Scarlett drives 50 miles per hour and Margot drives 80 miles per hour. The two of them want to drive for more than nine hours to make the trip worth it and cover at least 800 miles per day. If Scarlett drives more than Margot, give three combinations of hours they could each drive and one they could not to meet their goals. Our two variables here are going to be how much Scarlett is driving and how much Margot is driving. Let's define these variables. Let's let X represent the number of hours Scarlett spends driving and Y represent all the hours Margot spends driving. Now that we've defined our variables, let's set up a system of linear inequalities. For our first linear inequality, let's write X plus Y is greater than nine. This is the hour Scarlett drives plus the hours Margot drives must be more than nine hours. For our second linear inequality, we have 50x plus 80y is greater than or equal to 800. 50x represents the total distance Scarlett drives, 80y represents the total distance that Margot drives, and 800 represents the total distance they drive together. And since we know that Scarlett drives more than Margot, here's one more. We have x is greater than y. This represents the hour Scarlett drives, which is greater than the amount of hours Margot drives, or y. Let's rearrange each of these linear inequalities into slope-intercept form so it's a little bit easier to graph. Now that we have them rearranged in a form that we can use, let's start by graphing this first one. Make sure you have a dashed line and shade away from the origin since zero, zero won't be a solution. Now let's graph this second one. Make sure you have a solid line here and you shade away from the origin again. And now for this last one. For this one, make sure you have a dashed line and if you test a point that's in quadrant four, it's gonna work, so you have to shade that region. Since this got a little bit messy, I'm just gonna clean this up a bit and just shade the region that represents the solutions. This region over here represents all the possible solutions. Some possible solutions here are 10 comma five, where Scarlett drives for 10 hours and Margot drives for five hours, 15 comma five, where Scarlett drives for 15 hours and Margot drives for five hours, or 15 comma 10, where Scarlett drives for 15 hours and Margot drives for 10 hours. These are just three of the possible solutions. An example of a point that's not a solution would be something like 5 comma 10. While 5 comma 10 works for the first two linear inequalities, it doesn't work for the third one where Margot has to be driving less than Scarlett. Big picture, keep in mind that while there are infinitely many possible solutions, there are also infinitely many solutions that don't work. This will be our sixth and final example of this video. Mina Ashido dances and trains every day. In order to have enough strength throughout the day, she must dance no more than four hours and train no more than seven hours. To make sure she doesn't overwork herself, she needs to stay under 10 hours of dancing and training combined per day. Create a graph and provide one combination of dancing and training Mina can do and one she cannot. Just like our last few examples, let's start by identifying our variables. One will be the amount of hours she spends dancing and the other will be the amount of hours she spends training. Now let's define these variables. Let's let X represent the amount of hours she spends dancing and Y represent the number of hours she spends training. Since we have two variables here for Mina, let's set up another system of linear inequalities. For our first one, let's write x is less than or equal to four, which means the number of hours she spends dancing cannot exceed four. Here's our second one. We have y is less than or equal to seven. This represents the number of hours she spends training, and seven is the maximum number of hours she can do this per day. And finally, we have one more inequality we can write. We have x plus y is less than 10. We're told in the problem that the number of hours she spends dancing plus the hours she spends training has to be under 10 hours in total per day. Rearranging these linear inequalities into slope-intercept form, we have 
these three linear inequalities. For this first graph, we're going to have a solid vertical line at x equals 4, and we shade to the left because it has to be less than 4. Now let's graph this one. We'll have a solid horizontal line at y equals 7, and since y has to be less than or equal to 7, we're going to shade below it. Now let's graph this one. We're going to have a dashed line with a negative slope, and if you plug in 0, 0 into this linear inequality, it's going to be a solution, so we're going to graph including the 0, 0. Now I'm just going to clean the graph up a bit and just shade the region that got shaded all three times. Since this region got shaded three times, any point located here is going to be a solution for the system of linear inequalities. And since Mina Shido can't dance or train for negative hours, we're really restricted to only possibilities in quadrant one. One possibility here is 3, 5, where Mina dances for three hours and trains for five hours. And a solution that's not possible would be something like this, where we have 8, 2. Not only is this not less than 10 hours in total, but also she would be dancing for eight hours here, which is more than the four hours she's allowed. And that wraps up this video on systems of linear inequalities. And once again, I'd like to thank the Gitterman family for their generous donation and making this video possible. As always, keep up the good work, and I'll see you in the next one.